welcome to today's lecture and today's topic is psychoanalytic methods including free association, transference and dream analysis. The objectives set for the present lecture are to get familiar with the term psychoanalysis, to get acquainted with different psychoanalytic methods or techniques, to know about free association method its benefits and limitations, to know about transference method, its types, benefits and limitations, to know about dream analysis, its benefits and limitations. First introduction, psychoanalysis was perhaps the first specific school of psychotherapy developed by Sigmund Freud and others through the early 1900s. Trained as a neurologist, Freud began focusing on problems that appeared to have no discernible organic basis and theorized that they had psychological causes originating in childhood experiences and the unconscious mind. Techniques such as dream interpretation, free association, transference and analysis of id ego and superego were developed. Many theorists including Anna Freud, Alfred Adler, Carl Jung, Karen Horney, Otto Rank, Eric Erickson, Melanie Klein and Heinz Kohut built upon Freud's fundamental ideas and often formed their own differentiating systems of psychotherapy. These were all later categorized as psychodynamic, meaning anything that involved the relationship and the self. Sessions tended to number into the hundreds over several years. Behaviorism developed in the 1920s and behavior modification as a therapy became popularized in the 1950s and 1960s. Psychoanalysis has three applications a method of investigation of mind, a systematic body of knowledge about human behavior and a method of treatment of psychological or emotional illness. Under the broad umbrella of psychoanalysis, there are at least 20 different theoretical orientations regarding the underlying theory of understanding of human mentation and human development. The various approaches in treatment called psychoanalytic vary as much as the different theories do. In addition, the term refers to a method of studying child development. Freudian psychoanalysis refers to a specific type of treatment in which the analyzant, analytic patient verbalizes thoughts including free associations, fantasies and dreams from which the analyst formulates the unconscious conflicts, causing the patient's symptoms and character problem, and interprets them for the patient to create insight for a resolution of the problems. The specifics of the analyst's interventions typically include confronting and clarifying the patient's pathological defenses, wishes, and guilt. Through the analysis of conflicts, including those contributing to resistance and those involving transference on to the analyst of distorted reactions, psychoanalytic treatment can clarify how patients unconsciously are their own worst enemies. How unconscious symbolic reactions that have been stimulated by experience are causing symptoms. Now meaning of psychoanalysis. Psychoanalysis is defined as a set of psychological theories and therapeutic techniques that have their origin in the work and theories of Sigmund Freud. The core of psychoanalysis is the belief that all people possess unconscious thoughts, feelings, desires and memories. Psychoanalysis is a type of therapy that aims to release pent up or repressed emotions and memories in or to lead the client to catharsis or healing. 
In other words, the goal of psychoanalysis is to bring that what exists at the unconscious or subconscious level up to consciousness. This goal is accomplished through talking to another person about the big question in life, the things that matter and dividing into the complexities that lie beneath the simple seeming surface. In the psychoanalytic approach, the focus is on the unconscious mind rather than the conscious mind. It is built on the foundational idea that your behavior is determined by experiences from your past that are lodged in your unconscious mind. Now what are the goals and objectives of psychoanalytic methods? The main goal of psychoanalytic therapy is to bring unconscious material into consciousness and enhance the functioning of the ego, helping the individual become less controlled by biological drives or demands of the superego. In traditional psychoanalysis, the therapist remains as anonymous as possible, engaged in very little self-disclosure, if any. Because the goal of psychoanalytic therapy is often to restructure personality rather than reduce symptoms, the process can last for several years. Psychoanalysis focuses on how the client mind works. Therapists view are not imposed on the client and are centered in interpretation within the context of transference. A unique and powerful characteristic of psychoanalysis is to allow transference to develop with the objective of increasing the client's autonomy by extending his or her control over inner primitive forces. It also alleviates symptoms and complaints of the patient. Its goal is to help in changes in life adjustment, changes in personality structure, etc. Psychoanalytic methods and techniques. Psychoanalysis is interested in exploration of the unconscious mind in order to cure. Psychoanalytic therapy is a form of talk therapy based on Sigmund Freud's theories of psychoanalysis. The approach explores how unconscious mind influences our thoughts, feelings and behaviors. Specifically, it examines how our variety of therapeutic techniques are used during psychoanalysis, all of which are employed in an attempt to maximize insight and gain awareness into the patient's behavior. Some of the most popular methods include number one, free association. Freud adopted the method of free associations during 1892 to 1898, starting from several criteria. The method was to replace the use of hypnosis in the exploration of neurotic antecedents in his patients. It relied on Freud's belief in psychic determinism. According to that perspective, psychic activity is not subordinated to free choice. All our mind produces has an unconscious route we can reach by means of free associations. Following the model provided by the adage, all roads lead to Rome. Free association is a technique used in psychoanalytic therapy to help patients learn more about what they are thinking and feeling. It is most commonly associated with Sigmund Freud, who was the founder of psychoanalytic therapy. Freud used free association to help his patients discover unconscious thoughts and feelings that had been repressed or ignored. When his patients became aware of these unconscious thoughts or feelings, they were better able to manage them or change problematic behaviors. The goal of free association is not primarily to uncover hidden memories, but to identify genuine thoughts and feelings about life situations that might be problematic, yet not be self-evident. For example, a woman might tell herself and others that she loves people she works with, but ends up with avoiding her colleagues most of the time. Free association would be helpful technique to explore the conflict or tension between these two competing attitudes. 
This involves encouraging the individual in therapy to talk freely about whatever comes to mind without any form of censorship or judgment. From the analyst, the therapist pays sharp attention to the individual's free associations, listening for hidden meanings and slips of the tongue, commonly known as Freudian slips, which may reveal unconscious conflict. The therapist also notes any interruptions in free associations that could signal the emergence of repressed, anxiety arousing material. By identifying and interpreting unconscious material as it emerges, the therapist helps the individual achieve deeper insight. In classical psychoanalysis, the individual would engage in free association while lying on a couch with the analyst sitting behind them out of sight. In recent approaches to psychoanalysis, the couch is no longer considered as an essential component of therapy. Now what are the working principles of free associations? Free association is typically performed in a therapy setting by first having the patient get into a relaxed position, means sitting or lying down. It can be done with the eyes open or closed, although most people find closing their eyes helpful in avoiding surrounding distractions. The person then begins to talk, saying the first thing that comes to mind. There is no effort made to tell a linear story or shape the ideas that come to mind. The person spontaneously says his or her first thoughts without any concern for how painful, silly or illogical it might sound to the therapist. The therapist is listening to the patient's free association and trying to identify what if any thoughts or feelings might be repressed. Bringing these repressed feelings or thoughts to the surface might help the patient better understand the conflict they are experiencing. The therapist takes note of these potentially repressed feelings and discusses them with the patient once the free association exercise is complete. The previously unconscious thoughts and feelings become conscious as they are discussed. This new awareness can be used to make deliberate changes in behavior. Now benefits of free association. Free association provides others with many benefits which include number one, in free association thoughts are not discarded even if they are irrelevant. As the therapist hears every thought, they can understand things neither of a person might be realized before. While patient might not see the significance of something that comes to his or her mind, the therapist has a broader perspective, having spoken to many other people with similar mental health issues. Number second. Sometimes people file away painful thoughts so deeply in their unconscious that even they don't realize they are there. If those thoughts are important to them, sometimes all it takes is a free association session to reveal them. When this happens, the knowledge of what they have been hiding from themselves can bring a sense of relief and closure. And once they know about that thought, they can deal with it consciously and reasonably decide what to do. Number three, free association psychology sessions can help us find where the problem began. Free association is central to the process of getting to the root of the serious mental health issues so that one can work with his or her psychologist to create a plan for overcoming them. Now, there are some limitations of free association. Free association can help nearly everyone, however, as a sole method of therapy, it has limitations. These are, number one, the issue the therapist is dealing with it is of important consideration. If the issue is trying to change behavior quickly, cognitive behavioral therapy might be more appropriate. On the other hand, if we want to delve into a long-standing and significant problem, free association might be an excellent way to open up the conversation. Number two, free association is typically not used for people who are in crisis, for those who are having suicidal or homicidal thoughts and plans. 
the problem needs to be dealt with much more quickly and directly. Number three, the main criticism of free association has been that people may overproduce associations. This can be caused by pressure from therapist. Someone in therapy may struggle to say as many random words as thoughts as possible. Difficulty can occur if the person is not actually thinking about these topics. Next method is transference. The concept of transference was first described by psychoanalyst Sigmund Freud in his 1895 book Studies on Hysteria, where he noted the deep, intense and often unconscious feelings that sometimes developed within the therapeutic relationships he established with those he was treating. Transference is a psychology term used to describe a phenomena in which an individual redirects emotions and feelings often unconsciously from one person to another. This process may occur in therapy where a person receiving treatment applies feelings towards expectations of another person onto the therapist and then begin to interact with the therapist as if the therapist were the other individual. Often the patterns seen in transference will be representative of a relationship from childhood. Transference is a common occurrence among humans and it may often occur in therapy, but it does not necessarily imply a mental health condition. Transference can also occur in various situations outside of therapy and may form the basis of certain relationship patterns in everyday life. Now, types of transference. Some of the common types of transference include number one, paternal transference. When an individual looks at another person as a father or an idealized father figure, the person may be viewed as powerful, wise, and authoritative, and an individual may expect protection and sound advice from this person. Next is maternal transference. It occurs when an individual treats another person as a mother or idealized mother figure. This person is often viewed as loving and influential and nature and comfort is often expected from them. Next is sibling transference. It can occur when parental relationships are lacking or when they break down. Unlike parental transference, this type of transference is generally not represented by leader or follower behavior, but by peer or team based interactions. Last one is non-familial transference. It can be seen when individuals treat others according to an idealized version of what they are expected to be rather than who they actually are. Stereotypes can form in this manner. For example, priests may be expected to be holy in everything they do, while policemen may be expected to uphold the law at all times, and doctors may be expected to cure any ailment. Now what are the working principles of transference? Transference may be positive or negative. Both types can benefit therapy in different ways. Positive transference can lead the person in therapy to view the therapist as kind, concerned or otherwise helpful. Negative transference might cause a person in therapy to direct angry or painful feelings towards the therapist. But the therapist may still be able to use these emotions to help the person achieve greater understanding. Dealing with transference in therapy involves more than just talking about events and feelings in the patient's past or current experiences. It is also a lived experience. Change can only come about through the patient's re-experiencing and understanding these processes. Major techniques in dealing with transference involve intervention to work on interpreting occurrences and developing explanations for the transference. Interpretations help the client understand the meaning of the transference that is occurring. 
Now, benefits of transference. Number one, when transference occurs in a therapeutic setting, a therapist may be able to better understand an individual by gaining knowledge of the projected feelings and through this new understanding, help the person in therapy achieve results and recovery. Number two, by understanding how transference is occurring, a mental health professional may be better able to understand both a person's condition and aspects of the person's early life that affects them in the present. Number three, proponents of psychoanalysis believe that transference is a therapeutic tool crucial in understanding an individual's unconscious or repressed feelings. Healing is believed to be more likely to occur once these underlying issues are effectively exposed and addressed. Number four, a therapist might also educate a person in treatment on the identification of various situations in which transference may be taking place. Number five, when examples of problematic transference become more recognizable, a person in therapy may be able to explore why the transference occurs and help prevent in recurrence. Number six, techniques such as journaling, can allow a person in therapy to identify possible patterns in both thought and behavior through the review and comparison of past entities. Now criticism of transference. Number one, a person's social relationships and mental health may be affected by transference as transference can lead to harmful patterns of thinking and behavior. Number two, the major concern is that the patient is not seeking to build a relationship with an actual person, but rather a projected image of one. The client is seeking a relationship with another person whom they projected feelings and emotions towards. Number three, some therapists may transfer their own feelings onto the client, a phenomena known as counter-transference. Number four, therapists can not always completely avoid social relationships with their patients. In these cases, it is likely that the therapist will have patients who experience transference reactions towards them. Now the last method of psychoanalytic method is dream analysis. Dream analysis is a therapeutic technique best known for its use in psychoanalysis. Sigmund Freud vivid dreams as the royal road to the unconscious and developed dream analysis or dream interpretation as a way of taping into this conscious material. In his book, The Interpretation of Dreams, Sigmund Freud suggested that the content of dreams is related to wishes fulfillment. Freud believed that the manifest content of a dream or the actual imagery and events of the dream served to disguise the latent content or the unconscious wishes of the dreamer. Freud also described four elements of this process that he referred to as dream work. Number one is condensation. Many different ideas and concepts are represented within the span of a single dream information is condensed into a single thought or image. Number two is displacement. This element of dream work disguises the emotional meaning of the latent content by confusing the important and insignificant parts of the dream. Number three, symbolization. This operation also censors the repressed ideas contained in the dream by including objects that are meant to symbolize the latent content of the dream. Number four, secondary revision. During this final stage of the dreaming process, Freud suggested that the bizarre elements of the dream are reorganized in order to make the dream comprehensible, thus generating the manifest content of the dream. Now what are the working principles of dream analysis? Most theoretical models uses the basic tenets of dream analysis in the same way. A person in therapy relates a dream of the therapist, discusses and processing follows and new information is gleaned from the dream. 
At the conclusion of the process, the therapist can help the person apply the new information in a useful way. Although these similarities exist, each therapy model applies dream analysis in different ways. In psychoanalytic theory, dreams represent wish fulfillment, unconscious desires and conflicts. Dreams contain both manifest and latent content. Manifest content includes information from the dream as the dreamer remembers it. Latent content represents the repressed symbolic meaning embedded within the dream. During dream analysis, the person in therapy shares the manifest content of the dream with the therapist. After specific symbols are pulled from the manifest content, the therapist utilizes free association to facilitate the exploration of repressed material. Now what are the benefits of dream analysis? The primary goal of dream analysis is to help people address the problems they are currently facing and it can be used to address many mental health issues. Number two, a newer cognitive behavioral technique called image rehearsal therapy has been developed to address concerns like post-traumatic stress and chronic nightmares. In image rehearsal therapy, also known as IRT, the goal is to rewrite the nightmare story. Number three, dream analysis is a key component in the process of becoming whole as a person. Dreams reveal a person's deepest desires and deepest wounds. So analyzing your dreams helps you gain a deeper understanding of yourself. Number four, a major benefit of dream analysis is strengthening of subconscious and conscious mind. Number five, another benefit of dream analysis is the establishment of positive self-care ritual. Now there are certain limitations of dream analysis. Number one, some believe that dreams are purely biological phenomena and therefore contain no symbolic meaning. The activation synthesis hypothesis coined by psychiatrists Alan Hobson and Robert McCarley states that dreams content is created by command sent from the brain that never get carried out. In other words, dreaming is simply another form of thinking that happens while we sleep. Number two, when used in conjunction with psychoanalysis, dream analysis is subject to the same limitations as Freudian theory. One major critique of psychoanalysis is that the theory is based on case studies, the result of which are hard to generalize to a large population. Number three, it does not meet scientific standards. For example, the idea that dreams are based on wish fulfillment has not been backed by research. Number four, its belief in negative and determinism view of humanity, asserting that humans are inevitable driven by unconscious force does not account for free will, a central concept in humanistic theories. Number five, there can be ethical problems with dream analysis as the interpretation can be wrong and yet accepted, which can lead to false memories. Now, dear students, let us conclude. The psychoanalyst uses various techniques as encouragement for the client to develop insight into their behavior and meanings of symptoms, including ink blots, parapraxis, free association, interpretation, including dream analysis, resistance analysis and transference analysis. Psychoanalytic therapy is different from other forms of treatment because it focuses emotions, explores avoidance, identifies recurring themes, experience oriented, explores interpersonal relationships, emphasizes the therapeutic relationships and free flowing. Psychoanalytic therapy can also help you learn techniques for coping when future problems arise. Rather than falling back on unhealthy defenses, you may be better able to recognize your feelings and deal with them in a constructive manner. People who receive psychoanalytic treatment tend to retain these gains. Most continue to improve even after therapy ends. On, 
On the other hand, the benefits of other evidence-based therapies tend to diminish over time. Psychoanalytic therapy can also be an intense process. It involves provoking emotional responses and overcoming defense mechanism. While the process can sometimes result in uneasiness, it can also help you understand the unconscious forces that exert an influence over your current behavior. Today, Freud's psychoanalytic perspective has been expanded upon by the developments of subsequent theories and methodologies, the psychodynamic perspective. This approach to therapy remains centered on the role of people's internal drives and forces, but treatment is less intensive than Freud's original model. With this, we come to an end of this lecture. Hope you understood well. Thank you.